Hello and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer and joining me is a man who just woke up from a million year slumber inside a subterranean cage that was just exploded by a nuclear warhead. It's Aaron Newarth. Skrunk! <laughs> they blew up his house in that movie, Aaron. And Godzilla, <laughs> King of the Monsters, they just went to his house and blew it up. I mean, it worked out in his favor, but <laughs> I meant like, I feel like Godzilla's kind of like, like Kane and Kung Fu, he just kind of travels to different places between the hollow earth and just like sleeps wherever they'll have him. But, <laughs> all right, this ancient pyramid not working for me anymore now since Ken Watanabe came down there and sure gave me a you know a bit of a lifesaver, but also ruined my current domestic place. Let me go to another ancient pyramid underground and see what I can do. I guess that's fair, but it's just like moving sucks. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You know, we obviously Godzilla probably has a lot of luggage, but it was all obliterated in the blast. <laughs> so it's, it's not like he has to like hire a giant U-Haul and have to go through all that these days. That's fair. He doesn't have to call Behemoth to like carry a large cart behind him. <laughs> yeah. And do that. And that said, I mean, in the next movie, he makes a friend. So it's like he has a moving buddy now. You know, that's now it's true. Not just, it's not just Godzilla by himself being like, uh, three three more piles of dvd boxes <laughs> because no. he's all because if you didn't know because that was also a huge cinephile and he has a huge physical media collection <laughs> like this this iteration of godzilla what are his three favorite films what are what are okay okay let's think this through okay. this isn't a, this isn't a podcast for jokes this is for seriousness so let's let's really hate this seriously yeah, yeah. godzilla's three godzilla of this of the american godzilla's three favorite earth films. protector earth takes protector. naps grumpy, grumpy a little surly just a little surly I, I don't I feel, think Godzilla's ever pleased about having to battle monsters. It's just like, ugh, I gotta go I, over here. That's so first one, I think. Uh, I think he's a big fifth element fan. I I, I think he has that kind of like Bruce Willis over it kind of appeal. But he's yeah. also like, yep. Yeah, but he's also like, but the makeup. Like he's really impressed mm-hmm. at the same time. <laughs> Good music, right? Good music. Good music. He's he he you know he, he low key loves Ruby Rod. So he's all about that. Okay, God, what about like your next? Do you think, or like Trick or Treat, or what? What horror movie does Godzilla like? Or like Kings of Summer, or what about Monsters, directed by the people who've directed the MonsterVerse stuff? Does he like Big Trouble in Little China, or Goon Two? I mean, if we're talking like horror movies, I feel like monster movies is kind of negate. It's you know, it's like Watchmen not having superhero comics because they're superheroes; they exist, so they have mm-hmm. higher comics, right? So I feel like there's no monster movies in Godzilla universe. Right? No, you know, he's not watching Tarantula. Like, <laughs> he's, like, that's not, he's not watching Beasts of 20,000 Fathoms. Yep. Like, that's probably not there. Uh, but like, and so in terms of horror, like, well, what see, like, what's what gets Godzilla? Like, what scares him? Like, what gets his like his blood moving? The Descent. It's I in caves. The, it's underground. The, I can see the descent because he, you know, his lack. Of, you know, he can't. He can't see, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got little like creepy things crawling around him. Like I could, yeah. Let's go with that. So fifth okay. element, the descent. We should do a top four. Three is uh, no good. We got to do a letterbox top four here. Okay. What about <laughs> like little first, little Miss Sunshine? Profile. Like it's a road trip movie. So an, so an he, indie. We need an indie. Yeah, he likes a road trip. He likes a road trip or sea trip or just swim across oceans. You know what I mean. It's like, is there a road trip movie that Godzilla likes? Um, Day planes, trippers, train, planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> He's a variety kind of guy, and he loves candy. <laughs> both, both this, both sweets and John. Oh man, yeah, that's a good one. All right, okay. So right. Fifth Element, The Descent, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. We need a classic. Uh, we need a. We need. We need okay. Misunderstood. He's misunderstood a lot, right? Misunderstood. I'm think I'm thinking of noir. Okay. Um, double, not like double indemnity. For not double indemnity, because like third yeah, I man. don't feel like he like the third man. That's that's good. Do you think Godzilla likes Orson Welles? I could see Godzilla kind of appreciating what Brett Wells brings. Yeah. So let's say the lady from Shanghai, just for, like <laughs> the exotic flavor of it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so okay. So the fifth element, the descent. Uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, and the lady from Shanghai. Godzilla's top four. Let's create a profile letter box. Nail it for him. Oh, that's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good four. And, you know they have to save the world and Fifth Element, and he saves the world from an alien. Yeah, while wow. t- while teaming up with others, and he has he has el- he's, it's an elemental power that stops it. Like you know, it's it's got a lot oh going my, for it. Oh my gosh. I was I was keyed in with that fifth element pick. I'm not just this again. This isn't just for fun, and this is a serious podcast. This is, 
this movie's blooms and flicks. I had a, I had a real, real obligation to deliver the goods here. I feel like my motto is to treat the most insane things seriously. Because then if you just take insane things and you do them silly, they're they're like doubly bad. But if you go hard on something silly, then it's worth it. Yeah, there's a reason why Leslie Nielsen is a treasured icon. He's <laughs> serious, he takes everything. So talking about silly and taking it seriously, I feel like Godzilla vs. Kong does a pretty good job of that. Because they talk about, like, right? Do you think, like, what do you think about Godzilla? Actually, what are your overall thoughts? You're a huge Godzilla. I brought Aaron on for this because he's a big Godzilla fan. He's probably reviewed every single Godzilla 4K Blu-ray Criterion release, published I- them. You should go read them. He's a gigantic Godzilla fan. So like, what what are your thoughts about the MonsterVerse that kicked off in 2014? Uh, so yeah, I am a big Godzilla fan. Um, that's very much a thing with me. And so the, the notion of having a new Godzilla, like we'll get into these individually, I suppose. But like with the, the notion of the, just being a Godzilla franchise in America that's successful, that's great. Like the, the thing, the thing with me, and I think a lot of Godzilla fans, is that the the bar is it's it's pretty low as far as what it needs to offer yeah. me to satisfy me as a Godzilla fan. It's pretty much does it have Godzilla in it, and that's you know like that's you're kind of, you're kind of there for me. It, does that does that pass the test for the Emmerich film? Not so much, Mm-mm. but regardless, we don't have to talk about it. We got these other four. We got five now at this point. Um, so the MonsterVerse as a whole, I'm a big fan. I like them for different reasons, all of them, including Kong Skull Island, um, as far as you know, just in, within the universe. And it, like I've said many times, it's my favorite current cinematic universe between you know the Marvels and the Conjurings and the the, the dearly departed DC universe. The um, this one is the one that does it for me because, for one thing, I like Godzilla a lot. I do think they have genuine stamps on them individually, which is just cool. Um, and I, the lore of it, I think, is just really fun. Uh, the I, I've read all like the comics that are taking place in between here as well, and I'm a big fan of the Apple TV series that they released. I think there's just a lot of really fun ways they've expanded upon, you know, giant monster stuff. Uh, does that mean like everyone has to like it the same way I do? Or everyone has to care about these characters? I don't even care about a lot of the characters, the human characters in some of these movies. So it's not like it's it's not like it's um working for me in certain ways and that I judge it in as much as like you know prestige films or any other certain things that are dependent on certain kinds of uh kinds of value when it comes to you know what makes a movie good or for whatever reason. Uh, for this one, it just delivers the things that I wanted. It has giant monster battles. It has a lot of fun ideas of how to deliver those battles or deliver unique worlds or what have you in Earth or on Hollow Earth or whatever. Um, I think the different directors have brought interesting touches to each of the films. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we can talk about like how I rank these or whatever in a little bit. But no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of what the MonsterVerse has delivered so far. You know, if you're sitting there in 2010 and someone walks up to you and is like, hey, man. You know, like Gareth Edwards, Michael Doherty, and Adam Wingard are going to be directing a Godzilla shared universe? Because I don't think Jordan Vogue Roberts had released Kings of Summer yet. But like, if someone said those three, like they had done Monsters, Trick or Treat, uh, you know, Adam Wingard had done Your Next. Like, so you're kind of like the VHS stuff. Yeah. Uh, the like, Mumble. Yeah. yeah. The Mumble. Yeah, exactly. Oh, goodness. But yeah, if you're, you're like, what? Like, what? And it's going to work. Like, they're actually going to, there's like, they've been talking about Hollow Earth for a long time they go hard on hollow earth and kong skull island and then godzilla king of the monsters they do it again then it happens in godzilla vs Kong, and then monarch comes back takes you back to what world war ii the the explosions and then the 50s and like this brings everything around and it's it's kind of a it's one of those shared universes that i think i could explain to somebody without making everything more confusing and these things involve hollow earths and godzillas and monsters like it it's starting it's coming together pretty well and you're right. I like how all these movies have different personalities to them. So I, I had to do a recent assignment and I rewatched them. Then I watched some of them again to talk to you. And I think I like them all more now. Kong Skull <laughs> Island, though, has like there's so many like weird glory shots in it. And there's that scene where uh, Loki, Tom Hiddleston, puts on the gas mask and runs through the green smoke with a sword in slow motion. I'm kind of like, what's happening here? But it, I don't know. They're all fun. They all bring it like it's. It's a scrappy franchise, man. Like you kind of thought it was going to die after Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong comes out and everyone's like, well, this is actually really good. And then Monarch comes out and people enjoy it. And I think the new one, the new Empire is going to be good. So it's it's 
it's always been on kind of weird footing, but I, I've I've enjoyed watching it and I've enjoyed the action and like man, what Godzilla 2014. This is really stock to say, man, but like Gareth Edwards, I'm saying nothing new here, but the way that he can achieve scope and scale with certain shots, like there's some epic moments in 14 Godzilla 2014. 14 is currently my favorite in the monster verse. It's that between that and Skull Island, honestly, they go back and forth because I just think that like Skull Island's like anime. Home yeah, life in true. a jungle setting with Kong. Um, it's very like Bob Roberts is a huge gamer. It's very obvious if you've played video games and watch his movie. It's like yeah, there's a lot of just clear video game stuff going on throughout, but also like anime. Like that, that whole Tom Hiddleston scene is like yeah, that exists because it's just fun to look at. Like that's <laughs> yeah. that's why it's there. That's why his character's there. His character serves no real purpose in that movie beyond Not... it's cool to have Tom Hiddleston just like doing stuff. Like, there's so not? many bicep shots of Hiddleston, there are. There are and, that, and then there's there's a lot of glory shots of Larson and Hiddleston. It's a sweaty movie. Great. Yeah, it's a very sweaty movie. It's very people are in the jungle sweating. They look um, well. They went to Hawaii too. Do you think I, I, one of the best things about Kong Skull Island, right, is the practical locations that they went to? Yeah, you can it's feel a good looking movie. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of reasons why I, I like it plenty. Um, that said, because that was my favorite for the the longest time, and still, you know, on a given day, it still kind of is. But like fourteen, it really resonates in the right way, especially when you really tap into what it's doing. When you get away from, let's focus entirely on story and character, um, which is it's not a terrible thing, but at the same time, it's like films are a lot of things. They don't always need to be this one thing. And it's like if I'm watching a Godzilla movie, the plight of Aaron Taylor Johnson's not like the make or break of it for me. That said, I think he's fine here. Mm. I, I don't think he's particularly bad. And I it kind of, the, the hot take I have is good that they killed Brian Cranston off early because he's given a lot of ham sandwich, and I don't think we needed more of that throughout the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but I think that's the appropriate way to raise the emotional stakes of what's taking place. But regardless, uh, Gareth Edwards is um, so good with scale. I was so excited. So I, I liked Monsters a lot. I saw Monsters... Like early when it came out, um, it was like an early screening for it, and I was so impressed. And there was like an he had an interview afterwards. I like I I knew that he had like done the effects himself on a laptop. So I'm like, this guy, cool. I'm in. I'm down for what he's doing. Cut to Comic Con um, when they announced Godzilla for the first time that it's happening. And I'm like, this fucking looks amazing. <laughs> like, what is this gonna be? It's it it's, has the somber tone going like the first trailer they showed was like this somber tone that really seemed to be capturing like the horror of this thing that was like coming in in a way where like we're already past like Man of Steel being like it's going to be about the Americana of Superman. And I'm like, oh, you, you kind of half delivered on that. This one's like we're going to deliver on the, the severity of what it means for this thing to have been rampaging. And I'm like, cool, give me that. Right away. Then we eventually get the trailer that has the whole like 2001 music with the parry with the halo jumps. And I'm like, who couldn't be excited for this? This is <laughs> yeah. spectacular. And then it comes out and it it's like super front loaded, but like everyone's like, we gotta go see this because of the the like the marketing of Godzilla was so incredible. They did such a great job of showing it. Um it helps that like it is well reviewed. It didn't make a lot of money enough for them to start a whole universe. So it's like it's not like it's a not well received movie by any means. But it does feel like it gets slack because of things involving like oh the humans and whatnot. It's like, uh, guys, <laughs> did you come to see the humans? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and I and like listen, like I'll say this over and over again, but it's like there are over thirty five Godzilla movies. the The amount of them that like have deep characterization for the humans, it's a very small number, and includes the one that just came out now as, as far as the strongest example of that so it's not like i walked in being like oh i can't believe they didn't get the humans right like that's it's pretty far over the course the of, of how much i need to care about this action what it does have though is this incredible spielbergian approach to godzilla where like it's so much focused on the awe and the wonder of stuff that's taking place and it knows how to gradually build towards those things as opposed to just giving it you right away not a terrible thing. I'm not going to be opposed to being like in the first five minutes I get Godzilla. But this movie like makes you wait a good while before you really get a good look at him. It has a really great sense of like how to display these fights so you don't get bored of them. I know there's a lot of, again, bagging on the like, it cuts away at like certain times. And I'm like, I love the after the fact like choices, let alone the fact that the camera always reflects plausibility. Something that escapes the other ones, but that's, you know, directorial choice. But there's a sense that 
everywhere you look in this movie is because a camera could physically be in those locations to show you what's taking place. Like it may like you know, there's a perspective it has to enhance the scale of it. And the scale is so tremendous. Every time I see it, if it's on TV, I'm watching 2014 Godzilla. They play it a lot. Mm-hmm. So somebody likes it besides it's me. It's a great cable they play movie. That, they play that movie all the time on TV. <laughs> um, and so like you get to these great, like these huge set pieces and like that's filled with atmosphere and stuff that just, it doesn't feel like other blockbusters at that time in a way that I really appreciate. And other blockbusters are the superhero movies, you know? Like that's what it is. I'm not against those. I like I love the you know Marvel the, the really fun Marvel movies and everything. But like seeing something that's doing something different, um, and like really giving you a sense of what it means to have a giant monster radioactive dragon like going through San Francisco, I'm all about. On top of all of this, it gives you one of the best, if not the best, Godzilla kill of all time when he takes that fucking Muto head and fire fires oh. his be- his heat ray down his throat. It's the coolest thing. Like, that's the kind of thing where you could be on the fence about this movie and be like, but that just happened. My life is complete now. Like, it's just so fucking cool <laughs> to watch how this thing plays out. I, I think uh, he was my favorite character of 2014 because <laughs> it's just like, I, it's like when he, there's there's a personality to Godzilla. And so I know Godzilla is Earth's protector, not really created by by nuclear tests, more like Awaken, but like watching it, watching Godzilla take the nap afterwards, watching Godzilla just barf down that thing's throat with lasers. Uh, I, I wish I had technical terms. And just explode that Muto. Watching Godzilla mm-hmm. swim next to the aircraft carriers while a helicopter hovers over it to give even a better sense of scale. Like this Godzilla in this movie is kind of like a grumpy protector who's just like, ugh, gets up, swims, fights, gets hurt, battles a couple of them, takes a nap, goes back in the ocean. Like I love that about Godzilla in this movie. And, and, he gets Man, a workout. He gets yeah, a workout this yeah. way. <laughs> and and listen, like, you know, I, I watched it again. I did not. Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Olsen, like, I didn't mind those characters. And also Jared Kiso from Letterkenny and Shorzy's in it. And that made my week. But I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I liked Johnson's character more because it's like, hey, let's go from point A to point B. Oh, I, also, I forget his name, but the guy from Raising Victor Vargas is in it. And I always like seeing him. So. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think Taylor John, like, Whatever you want to say on the performance, fine. I could I could agree that I've liked him more in recent years where he just pops up mid movie and it's like I'm a supporting character now, <laughs> like Tenet or like oh, yeah. Bullet or Bullet, Bullet Train, Train. To play like a character. Like I think he like the leading man stuff. No, I don't think it's for him. Mm-hmm. I think he's more fun in you know playing like quirky character roles, which is why I get insane every time someone's like he should be James Bond. I'm like no, he shouldn't. No. That'd be boring. Yeah. <laughs> let, let him play. Let him be a Bond villain. He clearly likes doing this. Oh, that's um, a, oh, that's a good shout. Yeah, let, let him be gold, gold hand, you know, <laughs> son of Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Johnson in this movie, though, I mean, the role he occupies, I like the idea of there being this kind of like observer that's like around. It, there's a lot of Godzilla comics there. Like there's a, what is it, like the 40 year war or so, the 50 year war or something like that, where it's just like it follows this one guy that's like constantly in the different like, eras that Godzilla exists in. So it's like you're seeing the battles Godzilla goes through, but like his specific perspective. It's cool like that where Johnson like just finds himself entangled within this plot. So you can, you have an audience way in essentially, but then just the way it like the movie doesn't have to do a lot of like work to like show what he's doing. Like there's a whole, like the Mutos drop eggs, right? There's a mm-hmm. nest and everything. And Aaron Jacob Johnson finds it. He's like, well, we blow that egg up. We got, so he does, you know, gets the whole gas thing going. Like there's, a lot of stuff like that that he's involved with where it's like inadvertently helping the world <laughs> while Godzilla's busy. And it's I, I think it plays well in the way it's like shot and the way it's like given to us and quieter story beats. There's a part where Godzilla like falls down because he's exhausted from fighting two fucking Mutos and Johnson's like there too, like on the ground. It's like I hear you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're both looking at each other. He's at on the, the very boat, right? Yeah, like a... Well, it's it's before the boat thing. It's like Godzilla falls on like just the ground, and it's like all dusty. Like I think he just got out of like the egg sack cave or whatever, and he's on the way to the boat. Then the boat thing, though, the boat thing always reminds me of like Saving Private Ryan, where like where uh, Johnson's on the boat, he has like a handgun, and he's just like pointing at the Muto. It's like I guess this is all I got, and he's he's like about to shoot, and then the Muto. <laughs> Like grabs it. It's like Tom Hanks at the end of Private yeah. Ryan, where like suddenly like the, the the backup finally comes. This is like and Godzilla comes. 
times. <laughs> it's like, the only thing they could have made that better is if he like pulled an American Psycho and like looked at the gun. Like, did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> did I just blow up that thing? Did I just but blow like, up that car? <laughs> it, you know, it makes sense too because that Mut- Muto is, is already pissed at him. So yeah, it's like he blew up the eggs. Yeah, <laughs> and so like it makes sense that the thing would be like, I'm gonna get that little little punk. Like I'm gonna go kick its ass. <laughs> there's a good there's a good pull. Um, but yeah, it's and then that gives Godzilla a chance to kind of catch a breather and get over his cramps and you know, just walk it off a little bit and get up and then pulverize the Mudo. It's it's good storytelling, man. And I don't know. I I'm just gonna say I, I I admire his scale. Like I was watching Rogue One, and I, there's a few times watching Rogue One where I just went, "Holy shit!" Like just when that star destroyer is over that city, and then watching the creator. And every time I learn more about the creator, I like it more and more and more and more. So I just really enjoy watching this guy's movies because, you know, I, I think he in all of every single movie he's done, he gives me what I want. Like the 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 monsters at the gas station. Like he gives me monsters. And then he gives me, oh, that's actually all I need. Yeah, that's it. And like, it just, he gives me, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He gives me a good beach fight in Rogue One. Like that's heaven for me. So yeah, he just, he's able to really speak my language. And so he, he does that. With, and I think Godzilla is a really good kicking off point for the franchise because regardless of the humans, this Godzilla is quite likable. I like Godzilla in 2014. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. we quickly learned that he has villains that he's facing off against so it's, it's easy to get on board of what he's after um he's just tired yeah he's, he's it like his godzilla's role in, in in 2014 is to be like all right i guess i gotta <laughs> clean this mess up now uh, japan really really fudged it by by uh setting off these this nuclear area to wake up these mutos and i gotta deal with this bastard uh, 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 19 he's more uh, like in the mode of I'm just around now I guess so, yeah. <laughs> because all these others are coming out here I gotta show everybody who's boss every now and again mm-hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> like what he's, you know, like, he, he's like a manager that's like coming in from out of town to be like alright we gotta clean this stuff up guys we gotta we gotta get the uh, get the get everything in order here you we're, did we're what you, who's king. you woke up <laughs> Rodan and get her like Ghidorah right. like Where's Mothra? Like, uh, it's, and and you know my biggest problem with Godzilla: King of the Monsters and incredible cast. I mean, like, I, I think anytime you have Vera Farmiga and Ken Watanabe and Kyle Chandler and Millie Bobby Brown and Sally Hawkins and Zhang Ziyi and Bradley, man, what a cast! But yeah, yeah like Asia High. Like, anytime you have a great cast, but then like Bradley Whitford's just funny in it. But the I guess my problem is, they're like, we're gonna awaken these beasts so that they can you know destroy the earth and bring back harmony but then they wake up the wrong one <laughs> of like all of them and then they're kind of like whoops like it's, it's like Ghidorah, like the, the alien of the species who's just going to terraform the planet and then it's like the whole thing is just caused by some humans pulling like a major oops and i guess you need that but i don't know something felt off about godzilla king of the monsters until i watched it again recently and i was just able to enjoy rodan fighting mothra and Godzilla battling like Rodan doing barrel rolls in the sky and like taking out airplanes and there's there's a lot to enjoy in it I guess but it it's kind of I would say it's my least favorite of the four but I still like it a lot I um I have it third um out of the four like again I like all of these movies plenty more than most people so it's like it's not yeah. it's not a huge difference yeah. here and I have, I have reasons why why uh GVK is at the bottom for me currently things change also but but the it's the it's the fact that it goes deep down the well of godzilla that it's like i'm not gonna get mad at a 200 million dollar movie that's giving me Ghidorah in 2019. <laughs> yeah. like looking like amazing in certain moments like, too yeah. like i yeah and i can i can and yeah the the depiction of it like they look like jmw turner post paintings come to life in certain instances where it's just these like wonderful like watercolor atmospheres that happen to have giant fucking monsters battling each other like cool down for that like i can i see the you know i'm not blind i see like issues i can look at i guess when it comes to king of the monsters but at the same time like this is so much like saturday morning fun for me just to like see them go this deep and be like okay so we have godzilla let's have mothra rodan and Ghidorah also in here like 
cool in this <laughs> age with these effects. A uh, Rodan, Rodan, who's always a dick and still a dick in this movie, and in this <laughs> but now, but now he's like rendered lovingly in these astounding CG graphics, like great. <laughs> Mothra, queen of the monsters, coming in here gets this ethereal, you know, uh, take with the music and Zhang Zi is playing a twin, and it's like, mm-hmm. all right, this is like nuts that they're like, like just go- geeking out entirely in this very expensive movie that did not do well compared to comparison Mm-mm. um and it's like I, I understand why for one thing you waited too long like why wait five years that's a long time to wait uh but also like geez they really just went for the lore on that one and i can admire michael doherty and all the writers involved are like wanting to explore that but yeah there's a lot of characters there's a lot of people there it's it's a longer movie not by much it's not like it's ever boring in my eyes but like it's it's doing a lot yeah I, I really and it's exploring the monarch thing more and the and the hollow earth thing more i like the 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 fact that it introduced this like which was opened up in kong so i'm like cool i like that the it's the most adver- it's the most like obvious like we're tied into each other movie of the movies as far as that goes because you have the first movie of kong which are you know two different things even though they exist in the same universe and this one's like and now they're together like let's see what the result is we have we have older um it's it's joe morton now but who is he in in Kong? um what's his name oh <laughs> from in, in the heights uh, hawkins um, hawkins cory Hawk, cory like, hawkins it's not, Col- it's not colton cory cory hawkins like older cory hawkins here is joe morton now you, you know yeah you, you have the the different version of monarch like it ken watanabe's back like it's just like i'm in, i'm so like invested in like what's this all meaning leading to and what have you and, and i'm and knowing that it's going to be godville versus kong I'm like, great, cool. Give me all this stuff that's relatively new to me. So it's not like I'm, you know, have to like dive deep into comic books from 70 years ago to like figure it out. Not that any movie requires that because that's dumb. If you could walk <laughs> in any of these, it'd be fine because you're an adult that understands how things work. Uh, but regardless, if it's there and you want it, it's there. Um, and so, no, I, I have a lot of fun with um, with uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. And it's just like, um, it's not GHC. Is it GHC now? Um, the score? Um, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, because yeah. I, th- I believe they kept talking the, about it. I believe the Splaw is the first one. GHC knows this. Yeah, and and um, it is right. I'm not making that up. Wait, <laughs> no. I, actually, no. I was listening to a. No, I was listening to Bear a, McCreary. That's uh, what it is. Cause, okay. I was listening to a Bear Mission McCreary. Impossible three commentary. For some reason, they kept talking about Michael. So that's why I, I mixed them up. Bear McCreary. I, they have similar. To me, they have similar kind of. When they go big, they they feel very similar to me. That's why I was mistaken. Uh, but Bear McCreary, um, he taking in the Ifakubi themes from Godzilla and putting into this, but the, the King of the Monsters. I'm like, yeah, great. This is <laughs> this is a really good score. And you got Serge Tankin from System of a Down to like sing the Blue Oyster Cold Godzilla song. Like, I'm so into that. <laughs> it's like this is all these little things. That's just it's fun. It's a it's a fun. It's like flawed, I guess, but like I'm not opposed to like what it's delivering for me. Because again, you got. Rodan and Ghidorah is my favorite non Godzilla Godzilla monster. So it's like the fact that I got a, a Ghidorah in one of these is amazing to me. And it's scary. You know, you know what's nice about this movie is you already like Godzilla. Uh-huh. And so bringing in Ghidorah as just the ultimate badass, like everything, every time this thing's on screen, you're like, oh shit. And then watching Rodan destroy that city as it flies over it, you know, watching the Mothra get a makeover with the new pinchers praying mantis and like a wasp stinger and becoming different and like the destructive capabilities of these monsters that's like what the movie needed because these movies these monsters could just steamroll our planet no problem and they just wanted to showcase that and so I, I think that was really effective for it but I guess you know at the end of the day if like Mark did you like it yeah because there's really cool moments in it but then, like, you just have so many characters. There's like Matt, Millie Bobby Brown, Vera Farmiga, Kyle Chandler, Ken Watanabe, Sally Hawkins, Zhang Zhi Yi, like, uh, what, Aisha Hines, Elizabeth Ludlow, David Strathairn, Bradley, Bradley Whitford, Thomas Milsich, Charles Dance. Like, there's a lot of people. Anthony Ramos pops up. Joe, Joe, there's just a lot of people running around. But CGI is expensive, VFX are expensive. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's good. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird one for me. Is is it possible to really like someone something, but also feel a little indifferent towards it? Like you like the moments a lot, but sure. you're not. That's, yeah, that's 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 plenty of best picture nominees that you like a lot and then you forget about. Yeah. The <laughs> I like it more than Pacific Rim. I think. Okay, let's. Are you a Pacific <laughs> Rimmer? I'm a huge Pacific Rimmer. 
Maybe we should get you on here to talk about that one day. I need to get my, I like Pacific Rim. Maybe, Sorry, I don't know. We've talked about both of them. Um, oh yeah. I like, worked, I like the it worked second one. Talk, it worked, it worked to talk about them as a pair. Okay. Think, yeah, I'm in. Shoot. Well, well, I think another. the first one is, the first one significantly better in my eyes, but it's still, I, I, that universe is interesting to me. And the, the threats of combining them, I'm like, do it. <laughs> if you want to bring it to the monsters, do it. <laughs> what would you and I do if we had to fight together in a machine? Oh, we'd be so, we, our drift, we'd be, we're so drift compatible. It's really <laughs> yeah. Jay, Jay's got nothing on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> in, in case y'all don't know, some Aaron will just send me a message and be like, hey man, you're going to love this. And then I watch it and I'm, it's not like you're putting it into my mind, but then I watch it and I'm like, I love this. <laughs> Yeah. Charlie Hunnam better watch out is what I'm saying. Yeah. We're so we'd be so good at a Ye- in a Jaeger. It'd be, it'd be awesome. What would your Jaeger name be? What would the name of the Jaeger be? Oh man. Oof. Great. I, be, Gypsy Danger is such a fucking cool name for a robot. Yeah, that's a good one. Deep blue sea? No. Scud. What about just uh, fart? You need, no. you need a com- you need a combination. You need two you need two names. You you say a word, I'll say a word. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll see if we're how how we work together. What, what would, give me one word? I have one word, but I need you to see, mine. Mine will go better second. You say a word. Oh gosh, I was about to say Hank, but that would just wreck everything. All right, so um, uh, Gypsy Danger is good. Okay, okay I'll do um um why why can't I think of a good word? Let's see, this is tough. What's, a good, what's my favorite word? Hmm. You got this. Come on. Just, just I'm telling you, out. man, this hurts. Just this is like, uh, out. The, um, let's see. Um, no, you need the right word, though. Let's see. Um, Whatever you say, this word's going to be great next to it. I t- I'm telling you. Rocket. Dynamite. <laughs> rocket. Dynamite rocket or rocket Rock, dynamite. Rocket dynamite. Oh. <laughs> rocket works because I love bottle rocket. <laughs> There it is. Oh, rocket dynamite. Mm-hmm. And it's high five and all over the place. And killing monsters. The symbol is a rocket in the center, and then it's a ring of dynamite around it. Because oh, I don't see you and I going rogue or be like, I got this, bro. Like, we're like, no. hey, man, let's just kick the crap out of this. No, thing. Yeah. We're, you know, we'll get the punches in and take a sword. Oh, man. Out or whatever. Oh, man I, would, I would learn, um, you know, the fist of the condor we would that's what we, we would use we do the fist of the condor in a jaeger fucking come down on its head <laughs> oh that would be amazing oh my god I, I i do like pacific rim a lot i, I think get, del toro gets scale also so that's yeah. why the, the first one especially is very scale focused and so I, I appreciate it a lot for that reason the king of the monsters still has the scale in mind it's 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 much it's not exactly like it, but like the first Transformers from Michael Bay is very scale focused. And then the ones falling that are much, they become lesser and lesser focused on like the fact that these are enormous robots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you never feel that afterwards. Right, the, the first one, like when they're in Sam Witwicky's backyard, it's like, you know, denting the grass and everyone's like pissed off. It's like, God damn, we got to clean all this shit up. Second one's just like, you know, Egypt, whatever. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. we don't care anymore. And they're like, yeah, they're big, I guess. I, with that said, the the best single thing within that entire five, six, seven movie franchise is that IMAX shot forest fight sequence in the second and worst uh, of the movies. Uh, but that forest fight sequence is fucking spectacular and emphasizes the scale because it's shot with IMAX cameras and they it's like it's it's uh, actual scale <laughs> of what it would be. So that's that's impressive. But I you know, the, the scale factor I think is so that's how that's pretty consistent in Godzilla movies. A little less so in King of the Monsters just because it's they're moving and this new one i mean there's a lot of running oh i love it so monsters. much i love it but it's like okay so we're full-on cartoon now yeah uh, whatever but just fine. teaming up I, I guess one time i had to count all the explosions in every michael bay film and by the time i got to the fifth transformers movies <laughs> i've done i have done so many data articles really i've done an incredible i had to count every vegeta stat like i've had to do some insane pulls for companies and i was in a really I've been in a, a frame uh, when I when I was counting the explosions in the last night after counting Transformers one through four, I was in a different headspace than I've ever been in and <laughs> pulling data ever. Like I was, I don't think I can ever explain when I got to Transformers five and counting the explosions what was going on through my mind. But it's such an insane, weird movie anyway. 
Mm-hmm. And then you're freeze framing it to count 18 explosions on the screen. That was an interesting. I, I almost I feel like I lost my mind a little bit on that one. I think I got it back. But yeah, that was a lot. Hey, um, <laughs> hey, can we, all right, Godzilla vs. Kong. We'll get this on Kong Skull Island. But mm-hmm. so it's your, it, okay, there, we, so we're saying all, we like all of these. So if all something, these are, all these are four stars, yeah. at least for me. Yeah, exactly. So if something's last, that doesn't mean it sucks. It's just, yeah. it's like, it's the least awesome of awesome things. For me, like Godzilla vs. Kong felt like such a blast of fresh air. You had, I mean, I love the, the, the fight on the aircraft carrier. It was just so, so, so silly. Uh, I love that just Rebecca Hall is running around and Alexander Skarsgård and Isaac Gonzalez. And like, I, I don't know. I, I had such a fun time with it. And then it got into the crap. I forgot the name, not the underground. The Hollow Earth. Yeah, the Hollow Earth. Like then he got into it. And then there's Mecha Godzilla. Damien Bashir just gets smashed. I, I, I really liked what Kaylee Hoddle in the movie. I thought she was like perfect. It's just, it's so silly and absurd. And there's an axe and Godzilla breathes atomic energy onto an axe and powers it up. Like it's, it's one of those movies where I just, I had the big, like, doesn't they use a spaceship as a defibrillator? Like there's just so many (laughs) moments in that movie that made me so happy, man. Like I, I, I like all these other ones, but there's just this like go for broke like you know godzilla 14 is relatively grounded kong skull island is like you said kind of like a video game kind of like a war movie still kind of grounded godzilla king of the monsters is gigantic and like a massive very serious explosion fest but then godzilla vs kong it's just like they take a train from pensacola to where to where's the final yeah hong kong yeah hong kong like that an underground train from pensacola to hong kong like that's more miraculous to me than any Titan that they built that secretly and it works and they just use it to transport alien, or, you know, Titan pods. So it's, I don't know. I feel like it was just made for me. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say it like, I don't deny the go for brokenness of it. I do think the, the films as a whole, I think they're tonally not that different from each other. The first one's the only one that's like, more serious but it's not like it's also not fun to see mm-hmm. like a like a, a cut from a casino gets ripped open from the ceiling to a hotel room in caesar's yeah. palace that uh, that reveals that the fucking side of the hotel has been ripped off and that there's a monster walking away in the distance like gareth edwards does not have fun um kong, godzilla v kong yes it's very it, it's very much more in the it's very comic booky in that sense um and uh, the 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 reason why and it's like I've it'll probably be the one I watch the most. Um, That's a good over, point. Yeah. Just because it's e- it's the easiest to put on because it's very stripped down, and that's that's where my not even a gripe is just more of like it seems very apparent to me that because Godzilla King of the Monsters didn't do too well, that whatever like plans they had involving like let's keep investing in the lore aspect of this is very much stripped away in Godzilla. Oh. It's very. It's they barely mention anything monarch related, um, outside of like doing stuff through because it's I mean Bashir's company that's doing everything. Monarchs just kind of on the peripheral in this one, but they go to the Hollow Earth, which is cool. Um, but like whatever lore based things were going on, there's just less of that. And again, it's a Godzilla like the bar is very low. So I'm just it's like I'm still getting this. Like, it's a movie called Godzilla vs Kong. Without credits, it's an hour and forty minutes. It, <laughs> it, mac- it maximizes the amount of stuff that I can see involving Godzilla versus Kong. Not against that. It's just more like the they shave. They, cl- they it feels like they very clearly shave this thing down to the bone uh, to get a decent runtime to make up for the fact that the second one is or the third one is you know longer. It's not I don't, again. I don't think it's. Not, I mean, we're coming off a year that had multiple nearly three hour movies, so it's not like you know being two hours and ten minutes with credits is like you know straining credulity as far as how much you can mm-hmm. tolerate um, but but it does feel like a movie to me that's been that and there's you know there's like lance reddick is like fifth build in this movie and he's in it for you know two minutes like there's it seems like it's a movie that's clearly not compromised but clearly there are concessions being made to like appease a certain requirement that they i think found during because this is being made while king of the monsters was in theaters so i think they're responding in real time to what they wanted 
that's me like highlighting like the things I dislike. The things I love about this movie are all the things you highlighted. I mean, it's it has a lot of fun doing all this stuff, and it's very colorful doing it. That Hong Kong like third act is oh. spectacular because of how much neons in place there. It's so cool to see for everyone that's complaining about how dark the other two films are, which I mean, if you watch them at home on like your, you know, not a 4K, it's like, I guess perhaps, but like, I mean, it, <laughs> they're cool fights. This one is like, we'll, we'll double it, go over time to make sure that you, <laughs> there's no complaining whatsoever by anybody. Cause yeah, you get some really cool stuff between Kong and Godzilla fighting it out in Hong Kong, which is great. Or that aircraft carrier type fight, which is broad daylight, which is awesome. Like that stuff's great. The, the uh, the the things with Rebecca Hall and uh, Alexander Skarsgård and Devin Bashir and Isaac Gonzalez, like that's fun. Um, I like that there's this kind of like journey to the center of the earth, Jules Verne vibe going yeah. on in the middle of this movie. The... And there's some jaw dropping bits, right? When when he gets down there, you it, it felt big to me. It yeah. felt like when that big screens, like you're just like, wow, okay, this is what I need from those movies. And I guess since it's delivered that moment. That was kind of what I needed. <laughs> and then it worked. And the second they get down there, it's like, and there's this flying monster. So yeah. of, he, he he rips it apart and then grabs his head and drinks its blood. It's like, okay, great. The most the most proud I was watching this movie was when um the big the, the their like spaceship thing that comes out, like they go through the big hole through the earth to China. Um, which is a fun joke in itself. But yeah, there's a hole in the middle of the earth that goes to China. <laughs> but uh, it comes out of the hole, and like Godzilla and Kong are fighting, and so Rebecca Hall and and uh, Skarsgård and the little girl, they're like flying, and it like goes like around Kong and Godzilla, like and it's like it's like you're on a ride. And I was like, this feels like watching the Back to the Future 3D ride from Universal Studios. And sure enough, Adam Wingard's like, I wanted to make something that felt like you're on the Back to the Future 3D ride in Universal. I was like, fuck yeah, like, oh. I, 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 I entirely called this. Like, there's a whole bit where like the DeLorean's flying and it like goes through like a T-Rex and lava and stuff, and I'm like this feels exactly like that moment. And that's what he was going for. So it's like. It, this movie's super nerdy and stuff too. Like it has all these fun references. It references King Kong versus Godzilla, uh, when he like stuffs the tree the in his tree, yeah, team, and he does that in this movie. Uh, it's the whole idea for his Kong was like he's supposed to be like John McClane, where he's just like a guy that's tired. Like he has the whole like jump off the aircraft carrier part that's like John McClane jumping off the building. Like it's just like stuff like that throughout. It, like all of these movies are really nerdy that way. They all have like guys yeah. that grew up watching like seventies, eighties action movies as well as guys movies and anime and cartoons and read comics. And they're like, and now we're putting that in our ridiculous Godzilla franchise. <laughs> like, sure, I'm all about that. It's great. Yeah, I also like the guest cinematic universe. Growing like, I never thought about Lance Reddick's tiny role in Godzilla vs Kong because I was just too happy that it was a guest reunion. And now we got Dan Stevens in the latest one. Like, we need Micah Monroe here, to pop the, up. The, we need some Ethan Embry. The, um, the the company that that uh, Lance Reddick and Dan Stevens are like from the guest, like that's in Kong. That's in Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> so that's in there. <laughs> oh, I love it. And, uh, and you just, I don't know. I, 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 Wingo just had fun with it, right? And this is an interesting thing where they plucked they a bunch have, of. I know, I know you're not saying they didn't, but I know they all had fun with it. That oh, seems no. very clear to me. That, but, I think that's the. Uh, you made an awesome point, though, is they plucked relatively obscure filmmakers to make, you know, the tiniest budget is 155 million for Godzilla vs. Kong. And, you know, they, they grabbed genre it, guys. Yeah, they, like, they grabbed genre guys. Who again. loved. You could tell they loved the movies, though. Like, you could mm -hmm. tell that these guys appreciated the creature and they appreciated the, like, I know Godzilla vs. Kong doesn't have the lore, but. It's fifteen million dollars cheaper than Godzilla: King of the Monsters, and it made eighty million more. And now we get another one. So, I, I think you could tell that these guys weren't just brought in for to be managed. Like I feel like they left their imprint on each movie, and they brought and that, Wingard back for this next movie. Yeah, right? and it, isn't it, he played ball? So. Isn't it kind of cool though? Like you bring in Gareth Edwards and just from Monsters, and you know he hadn't had much experience, but he really did a good job and i think doherty when i listen to the commentary on that movie he loves this he's a monsters. he's the clearest like yeah. giant nerd for godzilla that's that's very evident to me from based on how he's talked about it and it's just cool right i don't know i just enjoy i don't know it, they gambled they brought in these guys but they let them obviously when you have a shared universe there's no full creative control otherwise you kind of get the new star wars trilogy which i like but and it's fun to watch and it makes for great talking points 
Like you, you kind of let them go, but also their man. Like, I don't know. It's an experiment that I think has paid off and created some really cool moments throughout. And I, the one thing, well, we haven't talked about Monarch, but Kong Skull Island real quick. Like, like also in Godzilla versus Kong. I love when Godzilla is just scratching Kong's chest, separates, like, you know, dislocates his shoulder and then just yells in Kong's face. Like, it's over. Like, we're done. Are we d-? like, it's like punch drunk love when Adam Sandler yells at. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. The uh, the arc of Godzilla I love in Godzilla versus Kong because like the the uh, for one thing that whole movie is Batman vs Superman but just less convoluted and better. Um, that's my, my other thought. Of, like the structure of that is exactly what I thought it'd be. It's like yeah, they'll be fighting, but then they'll have to team up because it'll be like some other thing, and that other thing turned out to be Mecha Godzilla, which is awesome. Um, but the but my the the thing with the Hong Kong stuff with Godzilla I love because it's like. People want to say it's like you know, it was losing that battle against Mega. It's like guys, think about this. First up, like, Godzilla's here, and Kong comes in. He's like, okay, I got to deal with this Kong guy. I already beat him once in the ocean. I got to beat him again. And now he has an axe. It's like, okay, what? There's an axe now. All right. I get it. So he's like, he's he's toying with Kong in that battle, and he get he he get he gets he he loses that round because like yeah, okay, I didn't expect the guy to have like a a heat ray axe to to, to counter me. <laughs> whatever so then second round starts and he's like okay you want to okay tough guy he got this thing that all right let's do it and then he like beats down kong steps on his chest is like remember titles on me king of the monsters <laughs> <That's it." laughs> so he's like and he's done he's he's done he's packing his bags he's going back to his house to watch the fifth element and then you know then like giant robot monster comes out of nowhere my guy's over here is like guy i'm tired i just had to like deal with this thing over here who's having cardiac arrest apparently needs a spaceship to help him out and now you want to like start starting shit over here i gotta like save hong kong whatever's left of it <laughs> so yeah it takes a he takes a bit of a beating and he's like okay <laughs> like we we both see what's going down right kong and yeah they get together and they fight and there's that other great moment in this series too where they both grab his arms and they ram him through a building that's the fucking coolest thing yeah. you can see. <laughs> that's so cool oh, <laughs> And then the laser yeah, like breath the heats up the sword, the axe, and you're yeah, just it's great. It's a whole it's a whole great final five minutes of that movie where it's like, let's just see all the awesome stuff happen at once. So then by the end of that, it's like, okay, cool. We're on we're on good terms. Like still, remember me, title, king of the watches, but you you can do your thing. Go back to Skull Island or whatever the hell. I'll be up here in up in my world. You'll be down there in your world. And he yells at him before he leaves, too. <laughs> he gives him a shout. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of a better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh that made me so happy oh so, Kong, oh. so yeah good times uh so kong school island <laughs> let's talk about this movie the cast you got cast shay like you got shay you know toby kebble i mean he they brought him in to do like he's already done what kingdom uh, war of the planet of the apes and those war movies planet, like, yeah he's an excellent mocap actor and then you get like you know john goodman john c Riley stealing everything he's in Corey hawkins john ortiz they should have just shot john ortiz by the way like he had him in the like why not like the guy got his arm ripped off and like torn to shreds you might as well have just you know home shot but like thomas man like they, i like they really him let from... him go they really let him go <laughs> yeah one, it's like nothing like, the birds got him i don't know what to tell you <laughs> oh just... Did anybody like him i mean he's, yeah. he was fine like, <laughs> was... Uh, but like eugene cordero who's in like he's in just a bunch of things i love like i always love seeing him pop up and then like Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston are this there to be pretty faces, pretty much. Like she just takes photos and to be like a better, I guess, Faye Ray, but they don't really have that relationship with Kong. And then Hiddleston's just there to be muscly and smooth. And Sam Jackson's there to get killed again by another monster, like Deep Blue Sea, Jurassic Park, and Kong Skull Island. He's always but he's in killed. the whole he's in the whole day. He's yeah. the villain. He's yeah. the villain of the movie, honestly. Like he's in the and he gets to do this like Colonel Kurtz thing. Yeah. Like, you killed my man. You killed my man. That means I'm against you forever, Kong. Uh, you're you know, we blew up Thomas, your island. You know, you're gonna say something about Thomas Mann. Oh, well, he was Kings of Summer. So yeah, like, he's Kings of Summer. Yeah, yeah, it's like seeing him. I like him in that movie. Like he gets a lot of screen time. I mean, Shea Wiggum. Shea Wiggum's death is probably top five in the entire franchise for me. He's like, I'm gonna it's sacrifice. So like it's it's anti Godzilla minus one. Godzilla minus one proved its point with no sacrificing. He's like, I'm gonna sacrifice myself, and the the skull crawler just whaps him a quarter of a mile into the mountain. It's incredible, and I don't know. There's for me, it's a movie of moments, and I, I like the lore. It's like, hey, we're here. We got to get here, and problems will happen while we try to get here, and then you split up the story. There's some cool monsters, like that little stick monster. I like the long legs monster. He eats an octopus in a lake. I mean, there's just 
No, yeah, uh, the the imagination for Skull Island is something I was like I was super excited for just the announcement of this before it was even in the Godzilla universe or, or at least that we knew of. It was just like Legendary's doing a Skull Island movie. Like specifically, it was called Skull Island and not Kong. Skull Island it was called Skull Island. It was, so I was like, cool. Like I like I'm a huge kid. As much as I like Godzilla, I'm a huge King Kong fan as well. I I, I love the original King Kong. Seventies one's fine, but I I really love Peter Jackson's King Kong as well. I think that's his best movie. Oh, um, <laughs> another more Those hot bugs. takes being thrown out there. Those bugs. Um, so like the idea of doing a movie that's just focused on Skull Island, I'm like cool. Give me all of that, whatever it's gonna be. I remember what was J.K. Simmons was gonna be in the star of it, not John Goodman. Uh, that's how far back that movie went. Uh, he was Kings of Summer, right? J.K. Simmons. Yeah, was he? In, was he in? Uh... Um, Offerman's in Kings of Summer. Oh, right? that's right. I don't, I'm, I'm just throwing guy. everybody in that movie now. Like John, like you know, what I like too is this. It's a dangerous place. Like they're oh, hanging out. Yeah, they're, they're hanging out, and that mother long leg spears that dude in a PG thirteen movie. John Ortiz is all happy, and a bird takes him. He mm-hmm. he straight up um, he straight up uh, assistants him from a Jurassic World. Like she gets taken out. Toby Kebbell, who I actually I'm a big Toby Kebb fan. I think once he gets going into his character actor phase, like Aaron Taylor Johnson, he's gonna be great. Like I liked him in Bloodshot. I liked him in Black Mirror. I think once he's a character actor, he'll be crushing it. He's in M Night Show. Like he gets wiped out. Like I like that Shea Wiggum's death is just so so stupid. I like I don't know. Eugene Cordero loves lives. Like I always think he's uh, he's he's great. But yeah, it's it's just an odd one because <sighs> call me call me insane here, Aaron. But there's so many moments where like they they absolutely do nothing. They're only there because they look cool. And maybe I should just shut up and be like, yeah, that looks cool. I'm gonna enjoy it. But like it's it, it makes it the least. I love it. I like it. I've watched it a bunch of times, but it's, it, I don't know. It, it kind of takes me out of it a little bit. Whereas Kong versus um, Godzilla. I don't know. I just can like, I can, it's like an ultimate cable movie for me. It's like, just watch it on, over and over and over again. But this one, I love the idea. I love the monsters. The shots are cool. John C. Riley's funny, but I don't know. There's just a lot of glory shots in it. I don't know why that bothers me and it shouldn't, but it I, does. I, I, I like that. It's the most, like clearly style over substance movie of the bunch I, I i think it just it has a lot of like jordan bot roberts like i don't know if i'm ever going to get this budget to make this kind of movie again <laughs> i'm just gonna throw, I'm gonna throw everything at the wall um, I'm on on location on location yeah and it honestly it just looks cool like it's a cool it's a very cool <laughs> movie like mixed with like all these like actors that are a mix of you know people like sam jackson and john c Riley, and then like comedians that i enjoy for various podcasts like eugene cordero and um what's his face from um it's not brooklyn 99 also uh mark evan jackson like it's like it's like it's such a like i said these are all movies made by nerds and it's like i love that this is like capturing a certain kind of nerd energy where it's like let's make like a 70s apocalypse now but it's king kong and there's fucking monsters and there's comedians on the island it's like all right like yeah <laughs> like nothing, nothing to this like yeah and, and i'm always you know giant monsters like that final fight is legit man <laughs> that final fights rules with the with the, oh, the chain and the uh, the propeller from the boat oh. uh he's using to go after the the giant skull walker thing or whatever like oh my god this how would you like, rank the final fights of these four the final uh 14's top just because that finishing yeah. move is the best um yeah it'd probably be 14 godzilla versus kong versus mecha godzilla then the skull, the Kong Skull Island stuff. Then King of the Monsters, just because I, it's the I don't think the final fight's the best fight in that movie. I think the Arctic fight uh, between oh, yeah. Thor and Kong is the best. Aaron Godzilla are the best in, in that movie. Uh, no, that's not true. The, the well, it's not even a fight. The water though, fight, it's, right? It's sorry. Isn't in there King a water of, fight when they blow them up? In King of the Monsters, yeah. Well, that it that was what I was gonna say. It's not oh, okay. really a fight. It's it's more of it's the Rodan sequence is my favorite. Action oh yeah, that that's because sick. It's, it's so good. But it's just Rodan versus plane, so it's not really. <laughs> and and then Ghidorah comes there and they fight, and it's like it's cool. Like I'm seeing Ghidorah and Rodan fight in the thing, but it's more about the 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 Rodan. Like I'm out of a volcano. I'm an <laughs> asshole because that's who I am, Rodan. Because Rodan's a giant asshole, um, always in every movie. Every I'll watch those show era movies. He's always an asshole. Um, he, he comes out. He's like, yeah, his wings are so fucking huge they're just like destroying mexico uh, um and then he's yeah jets are after him he's like okay whatever barrel roll bites a guy like it's a, there's no purpose to beyond just being like i'm gonna be the biggest asshole <laughs> that's his whole that's his whole deal 
that's like like <laughs> that's why I, like i begrudgingly respect rodan it's like you're getting what you you get you see what you get <laughs> with this guy like mothra's like yeah force for peace godzilla's like i protect the world and whatever Ghidorah's like i just want to get godzilla and rule the world uh because i like it i like ruling the world more than godzilla and rodan's just like I'm just here to be an asshole. Guys. It's Chaos. Like, my motivation is: Are you there? Now you're not because I'm an asshole. <laughs> like, he's like the Joker. <laughs> he is, he is the, he's the Joker of the monsters. <laughs> he's just a dog chasing cars. <laughs> Rodan. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones got those scars, from Batman Forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love these, man. This is great. And then uh, last but not least, Monarch, uh, which Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell can't go uh -huh. wrong. And not like time travel, but timey-wimey stuff. Yeah, non-linear, you know, dual narrative yeah. storytelling. And I, I know a lot of people have complained about like the millennial angst in it, but I don't know. I don't know. It's got Kurt Russ. And it's got Wyatt Russ. Like, I like them. And it's got Anders Holm playing John Goodman. That's fine. I like that guy Tim from Monarch. Duvall's cool. It's I don't know. I'm I'm like Godzilla. Like I love. I don't know. I like I like that friend. I don't know. It's a good time. What do What do you think about Monarch? When they introduced the fact that there's going to be a show based around the Monarch stuff that I thought was missing from Godzilla versus Kong, I was like, oh, so they put it here. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, down with it. Let's see what this is. I got the screeners, and I was like, again, yeah. as a Godzilla fan. It's got Godzilla in it. Like the bar was uh, the met, it was already met <laughs> pretty early on. Um, being a ten episode series, like yeah, you're gonna have to have deal with like plots and things that you know, are pretty standard for TV. Um, this one is like secret family, and it's like all right, we'll go with this. Let's see where it's going. Um, and like you know, I had fun enough with that, but obviously yes, the Russell stuff is the highlight on, on both parts because I think both Wyatt and I. Obviously, we all like Kurt Russell, except for Jay, who hates Big Girl Little China. But, oh, um, I, but, but <laughs> most of us like Kurt Russell. Like Don't get me started. <laughs> um, and then, like Wyatt Russell's certainly grown into his own, and mm -hmm. I and I, I really appreciate both of them. And I think they both have plenty of fun to fun fun stuff to do throughout both of these uh, both of these um, timelines within the TV series. And I just frankly enjoy exploring the Monarch stuff, mm -hmm. like the, the I. You know, what I was describing is like, what if X Files but giant monsters? And yeah, that's what this show is delivering for me. It's just like, yeah, we're nailing a narrative down that details the inner workings of conspiracies revolving around the giant monster organization, and then show you also giant monsters. So I yeah. dug it, and and oh, what Mari Yamamoto, she's cool too. Uh, I liked her a lot in this. Is what Kiko. Like I, I thought she was really solid alongside Holm and Russell. And there's some cool new Titans. The Ice Titan that was yeah, brought up. Ice one's like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then like there's the there's that the flying dragon that they got to deal with, the ion dragon. I don't know. It's it I don't know. It, then they sent the screen. Well, Apple, they always send out their screeners early, but they have some confidence in it. And I watched as people kind of complained with the first couple episodes, which is odd. I don't like this show because of the first two episodes out of ten. But then I think as it went on, I started, people started going like, oh, wait, this is actually really good. Oh, wait, this is fun. Like, oh, wait, this is getting really good. And I think it does travel some cool play, literally. Like, it, I like when they dump them down in the, the space in between the two areas and just, I don't know, it's cool. It's a good show. And I hope they get a season two, but they haven't announced it yet. Not By the way. because I imagine because it's expensive. So they want to like really make sure they can do it appropriately. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, I think, I think that's why Silo after... is getting a second season because that that show didn't. It costs money, but it's not nearly as expensive to make. I would think is Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Is there, are there giant monsters in it? No. Yeah, it's not like, expensive. Not I feel expensive. like Westworld <laughs> priced itself out. It could have gotten another season had it just been like, "Hey, we don't need to spend twenty million an episode." But eh, I, I, I don't know what stopped them from making a final season of a series that's very dedicated on a storyline that it clearly had in mind. I, that's yeah, that's true. That's it, it got too expensive. I think. I'm sure it's expensive, but I don't think it hasn't been worth it. And yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> like it's not like they have to like get rid of it afterwards either i mean they get to keep what it's like they destroy westworld after they air an episode of westworld like it gets to keep existing true so, i feel like there's if we didn't have certain people in charge of Warner brothers i feel like there's ways you get around making money like i i don't it's a whole other conversation but it's like <laughs> yeah you can run things like a business um and succeed in whatever 
you know, way that makes you feel comfortable. But in terms of like business in relation to arts, you know, these companies, Warner Brothers, Disney, they wouldn't still be around if they weren't good at both the art thing and the money making thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, to, no one likes to hear we have to take a loss on this, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, it's, shit happens. You got to take risks. <laughs> and like, there'll be other ways to make money. I guarantee you. Like you're you're still gonna be a millionaire tomorrow if Westworld season five doesn't get the ratings high that you're hoping for. Yeah, no, and, and the, it's not like the public benefits from being like, oh, so we don't get a conclusion to our series. That's we don't get to know what happens. Uh, all right, that's great. Thanks. I, I was convinced they were gonna do a movie just to kind of give us something. That'd be too complicated. No one's gonna watch <laughs> you. No one's no one's gonna walk into a Westworld movie and be like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, I watch true. Westworld, and every season, I'm like, when? What is this again? Is yeah. This? Why is the Scars Guard here? But hey, the, all right, all right, all right, before we get out of here, real quick, uh, uh-huh. give me your three favorite moments from this entire franchise. Uh, obviously, uh, Godzilla blows a heat ray down yeah. Ludo's neck is one of them. Um, <laughs> I feel like that should be a default. So let's go about three other ones. Okay, yeah, three that. other ones. Um, the 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 like the reveal of Ghidorah in King of the Monsters is wonderful. When yeah. it, the whole like build up to it, as far as it's breaking out of the ice, the tails start popping up from under the ice. Then it's like one head, then another head, and then O'Shea Jackson's like, "There better not be three. And the third <laughs> one pops out, and he's like, "Oh, there is three. He doesn't say that, but that should that should have been the line. Uh, <laughs> what, what if that's that's why I should write scripts. <laughs> Yep. There better not be another one. There better not. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, dang. Um, <laughs> uh, so, okay, that's one. Um, yeah, let's see. Let me think of something from Kong Skull Island that stands out like super high for me because I, I really like that movie a lot. What, I mean, what's... when he starts swinging that thing on the mo- the creature, like, and then when that monster bites Kong's hand and then Kong pulls his innards out, like that's yeah, incredible. That's a it's a good it's a good kill for sure. That you know it's it's a really good kill. And I love when that guy gets speared by the mother long legs. You're like, what the what just happened? And like it's, I love the op the opening's cool. Oh, I'm uh, going Shay. I'm taking Shay. My three favorites I, when Shay gets obliterated into a. I, I was leading up to that. I'm gonna say Shay too because yeah. I think that's such a fun inversion of that <laughs> trope, and it's very funny but like dark at the same time. It's just a good it's a good bit. Yeah. Um, the opening is really fun though. Where like the two like the plane like. John C. Riley, young John C. Riley is introduced oh, like so falling good, out yeah. of the sky and he lands. And the movie for a second is like Hell on the Pacific, this old Lee Marvin to Shiro Mifune movie, where he's like, it's a Japanese soldier and a and an American soldier stranded on an island. And, and it's like, and they're, you know, they're like, I guess we hate each other. And yeah, we were going against each other. Except this movie's like, and now there's a giant monkey in the middle of each other. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> all right, that's what what an obscure reference to pull. Uh but yeah, no, the Shay Wiggum thing from Kong Squad. And then with um with Godzilla versus Kong, I mean it. That it's hard not to choose like the Mecha Godzilla through a building thing is like that's fucking cool. Uh, but that that uh, aircraft carrier fight, I mean that's that's great. That's great stuff. When oh the John McClane jump when uh, when Godzilla climbs on the carrier and they're both standing on this thing, they're like, "How does this work? I don't care. Boats float. Don't worry about it." And they're like, <laughs> all right, it's an air- it carries <laughs> aircraft. Are, and they're that big? I mean, I mean well, yeah, aircraft carriers are pretty big. And then, like, God, King Kong, like, gives a big punch, and Godzilla, like, turns a bit. He's like, okay, I see this coming, because I'm not stupid. And then he hits, then he slaps King Kong back. <laughs> he's like, you don't punch me. <laughs> and then uh, they have a brawl. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with Shea Wigan blowing up, the nap in Godzilla, and then the axe power up in Godzilla versus Kong, where God- Godzilla just breathes on the axe, and you're just... I think I picked up my wife and ran around, the, you know, just ran around <laughs> the place with it. Cause I'm like, I was like, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the greatest thing ever. Well, that's, I mean, that's the monster verse in general. Like there's so many things to take seriously as far as what kinds of movies you watch and like how to appreciate them or what have you. And this is like, we got a bunch of nerds slapping together visual effects that show you giant Godzillas and Kongs and Ghidorahs and Rodans and Mothras. Like stop stop thinking too much (laughs) yeah i'm not a person that says turn your brain off because i think that's a stupid phrase but i'm like the the requirement for what you're supposed to enjoy here it doesn't seem like it's a mystery it seems like it's pretty straightforward there's giant monsters and they need to be battled and somehow and these movies constantly deliver that in, in exciting and fun ways and they have like 
it's also like these the cast they're choosing it's like they didn't give these person enough to do it's like, who cares like they're here they wanted to have fun they yeah. did they said some lines some of them were probably funny whatever what do i need to hear his second grade teacher how he fucked him up and now he's a scientist for monarch who cares i just want to see him having fun like that's that's it that's all i got like it's, oh. it's, it's fun to see it ken want nobby's here just to lend gravitas and say let them fight cool done like that's that's all you got you sold me i, I, I kind of want to watch kong skull island or thinking about what you said about a dude got 170 million dollars to make a video game <laughs> I mean, oh. he's, been, he's been signed on for Metal Gear Solid for the longest time. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I'll see, I'll see what that goes. Yeah, that's been in in production for many, many years. We'll see yeah, what I, I, I don't think Oscar Isaac was supposed to be solid for a while. I don't think that's happening anymore. So we'll see where that goes. Jeez, well, hey, uh, where can people find you, man? And where can they read your stuff, listen to your shows, all that? Where, where, uh, where can people find you? Well, I host a podcast called Out Now There and A. My friend Abe and I discuss weekly. Uh, releases and we have a lot of fun uh, bonus episodes as well including a commentary every month mark has been on many of our commentaries um and we just had like all our oscar shows we're gonna have our summer stuff coming the horror episode is brilliant the horror episode we had our horror awards pretty recently which is super fun so yeah we have all that that's everywhere you can find podcasts i uh write for league of entertainment.com for movie reviews i write for why so blue for blue and criterion reviews um everything i do can be found on my Substack page the code is and I'm on all the socials at Aaron's PS4. Crushing it. Well, dude, thanks for joining me. Thanks for this. Writing. This is quick, quick. You know, like I, I didn't give you much notice for this, but I was like, I, I need to talk about these movies because this, this is not hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is not hard to do. I just it's not hard. To, not hard to prep for this. I've decided on the podcast when I get these huge research assignments, I'm just gonna do an episode about whatever I research and message someone who loves the stuff, and then I can just mm -hmm. get easy content out of it because I don't like doing episodes that I don't have much research. So I, I know I, I had to do a ton of staring at creatures so i was like i gotta talk about this but hey thank you for joining me man sure thanks for having me all right so for me mark hoffmeyer for aaron newerth this is me so the flicks we'll see you next week